Hi, I'm Paul Miller with The Verge. I'm here with Colin Angle, the CEO of iRobot. And we're going to talk about robots, which is my favorite subject in the entire world. And thank you so much for joining us. It's so hard to figure out where you guys are focused because you do those wild, crazy amphibian thing you're talking about. You do really serious military stuff. You do cleaning stuff. I mean, where, is, where is your focus? What do you spend your time on? Well, you know, I think that <coughs> the consumer side of our business has really become a very, very important um, part. So that the amount of energy we are investing in the consumer aspect of our business trumps most of the most of our um, programs. The military side is very important for us. Uh, we have the Packbot, the Scuba, and we've just launched a small first look robot, which you can you can throw probably as far as you can, okay. and have that survive and send back information. Uh, and also are looking at remote presence. We have a mission. We have a purpose. It's all long term going toward extending independent living mm. in the home for the customer. Uh, and so that as the country ages, as the world ages, we need solutions to allow people to live independently. We need robots in the home that not just clean the home, right. that's necessary but not sufficient. We also need technology to allow doctors and nurses and caregivers to come into the home and provide special purpose care or else you end up moving into assisted living right. uh, and that's uh, very expensive and increasingly unaffordable for people. Right. So, we're develop while we develop these cleaning technologies, we're also working on robots that can provide medical care. Mm -hmm. And so we also uh, just announced in our what a segue, by the way. W well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got um, this very cool new robot, uh, which is the RP Vita, and its mission is to start allowing doctors to actually treat and diagnose patients at a distance. So with this robot and an iPad, right. a doctor can first send the robot to whatever patient he wants to see, and when the robot arrives there, interact with that person, zoom in using a high definition camera, take bio readings, your, your, um, use a stethoscope or interface with any of the other um, instruments in that uh, the patient's room and make a diagnosis. So what's the next step after this? Do, do you know, you talk about helping people age independently. Yep. Uh, in the home, is this gonna work in the home? I mean, it's a little bulky, it's not gonna do stairs. Well, there's, you know, ultimately you want the robot to do stairs, so that's a problem to go solve. Right. I mean, it, the, in the home ultimately, what we'll, uh, what we'll see is the robots like Roomba slowly disappearing. They'll still be there, but you'll have to do less and less in order to maintain them. You know, have, you seen, uh, have you seen Robot and Frank? Uh, of course. <laughs> is, that, is that the dream? Well, you know, we're not sure that we want the robot to have the same willingness to go along with questionable <laughs> activities, but uh, okay. you know, I think... I but that's think it, not FDA approved yet? Not, uh, not yet. Nice. No. Um, there seems to me to be sort of a leap recently with these sort of, a, a, you know, Baxter mm -hmm. uh, and these uh, cheaper robotic arms. Is right. that something you guys are looking at? That's, is, is that getting easier quickly? I mean, it's, uh, as robots have a less expensive ability to understand in their environment, it opens doors for the robots to do more sophisticated things. Right. I, I guess now I'm Baxter asking. is an is a manufacturing robot, so right. it operates in a unstructured environment, but it also is designed to be used in close proximity with people. Right. So it's cool because uh, you no longer have to separate the robot and the and the and the worker. Yeah, and so that type of technology ultimately will become important as we add manipulation onto uh, our robot. And do you see that technology accelerating? Absolutely. I mean, I think that what Baxter does is, is shows that lower cost uh, manipulation is possible where we trade artificial intelligence for mechanical precision. Uh, and that's a, that's a great and exciting trend. Robots like... I mean, using more artificial intelligence instead of spending more on mechanical. Correct. And then uh, you mentioned this becoming like a robot butler. Yeah. Uh, or th that's your dream. And I remember you talking about that before, yep. of, of, a, of, of a bigger robot helping operate the other robots. 
but a lot of that is, is about the user interface. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're seeing uh, Siri and right. Google Now, these really exciting uh, artificial intelligent um, natural language user interfaces, is that something you guys are looking at or how do you want so to So we'll be that? a consumer of that technology. The, okay. the mobile industry is a fantastic boon for the robot industry, right? Because I can just put an Android or an iOS device as the head of my robot and have access to all of that functionality at a very, very low cost. And so uh, the home robot that's interacting with you will be leveraging the, uh, the, the mobile user interface technology that exists, and iRobot will be focusing on obstacle avoidance, navigation, map building, manipulation. Manipulation. <laughs> there you go. And um, we'll, again, it's an accelerator for the industry. So we'll be able to see more and more capable robots first attacking commercial applications and then moving down in price. Right, so when, I, when do I get to buy one of these? <laughs> when can I afford this with an arm to take my frozen chicken out of my freezer to defrost it for me while I'm at work? How well do they pay you at The Verge, you know? I think it's, that's the How key. well do they pay me at The Verge? <laughs> uh, the technology to do that at a relatively expensive price exists today. And, you know, over the next 10 years, we're going to see it go down and down and uh, I won't predict exactly what the date is, but it certainly is rapidly approaching. And in 10 years for Sirius this time, right? Uh, we've heard that number a lot in the robotics industry. Yeah, but, but not from me. Not from you, okay. I, I, I'm a, uh, uh, I believe one step at a time. I think that when people start making grandiose statements about what in a mere few years is possible, or what their fear is in a few years, um, we're, not, we're not close, okay? We need to, pick applications that have real concrete value to customers, deliver, exceed their expectations, and move on. I mean, I think that the Roomba is such an amazing example of what can happen if you do something very basic, but not incredibly, random. not random, <laughs> but very well. I mean, the, the, um, uh, there's over eight million Roombas that have been sold. And we are the fastest growing segment of the uh, vacuuming industry. And around the world, robot vacuuming just a few years ago went from being non-existent to being a category on itself, where in many countries, we are one of the leading vacuum cleaners sold. And so that's a business. That's something that'll allow us to make money, reinvest money, create new things, and accelerate the marketplace. So pick something, do it very well, move on to the next thing, and then over time, as I mentioned, these point solutions for cleaning will be becoming increasingly self-reliant. So you may have to interact with them you know, once a year, and a robot like this comes along, greets you at the door, you interact with it, and from there, your house knows what to do and how to take care of itself. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to that future. Okay. I don't know really what to say to a robot. I love you. <laughs>